Now let me discuss the clinical uses of cephalosporins. Right, clinical uses of cephalosporins. First, let me discuss the clinical uses of right the clinical uses of the first generation cephalosporin. If you take the first generation cephalosporin, remember these are active against the gram positive cocci, including the staphylococci, right? They are active against gram positive cocci, including staphylococci also. Now, whereas if you take MRSA, that is methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus, MRSA is resistant to cephalosporins also. For MRSA, the drug of choice is only vancomycin, right? Other penicillins and other beta lactams, they are also resistant to the MRSA, alright? So, MRSA, remember, it is resistant to cephalosporins. Right, it is resistant to the cephalosporins. Next, next you take one of the first generation cephalosporin that is cefazoline. Remember, like we have the first generation cephalosporin that is cefazoline. Cefazoline is the drug of choice for surgical prophylaxis. Right, cefazoline, remember. It is the drug of choice for surgical prophylaxis. All right. So that is about the cefazolin. This is a multiple choice question here. All right. So these are the clinical uses of the first generation cephalosporin. Now let me discuss the clinical uses of the second generation cephalosporins. Right, second generation cephalosporins. So, if you take the second generation cephalosporins, remember this group of drugs, they are less active against the gram positive organisms. If you take the first generation, they are mainly active against gram positive organisms. Whereas, the second generation, they are less active against gram positive organisms than compared to the first generation agents. But, these second generation, they have extended gram negative coverage. Right, they have extended gram negative coverage. Now, let me tell you the clinical uses of this second generation cephalosporin. We have the second generation cephalosporin, for example, like you take cefotitan is one of the second generation cephalosporin, and the other second generation cephalosporin, like cefmetazole and cefoxetin. Right, cefmetazole and as well as cefoxetin. Okay, so these second generation cephalosporin they are active against anaerobes like bacteroids fragilis. Right, they are active against bacteroid fragilis. Okay. So, these are anaerobic organisms, right? This is one of the anaerobes. Next, we have one more second generation cephalosporin that is cefuroxine. Cefuroxine, it attains higher CSF levels compared to any other second generation cephalosporin. This will be the multiple choice question. So, remember, like we have a second generation cephalosporin that is cefuroxine. This particular cefuroxine, it attains the higher CSF levels. Okay. 
it attains the higher CSF levels as compared to any other second generation cephalosporin. All right. So, this is about second generation cephalosporins. Now, coming to the third generation cephalosporins. Right, the clinical uses of the third generation cephalosporins. So, if you take the third generation cephalosporins, remember these are active against gram negative organisms which are resistant to other beta lactam antibiotics. Okay? So, these are active against, right, these are active against the gram negative organisms. Right, gram negative organisms resistant to other beta lactam antibiotics. All right, next. Now, if you take the third generation cephalosporins, remember these can also penetrate the blood brain barrier but there is an exception remember all these the third generation cephalosporins right third generation cephalosporins they penetrate right they penetrate the blood brain barrier but there is an exception for this except cefepirazone and cefixim all other third generation cephalosporin can penetrate the blood brain barrier Okay, so right exception is cefepirazone is one drug which will not penetrate the blood brain barrier, and the other one is cefixim. Right, the other one is cefixim. So, except for cefepirazone and as well as cefixim, the other cephalosporins, they will penetrate the blood brain barrier. All right. Next. The other thing is, some of the third generation cephalosporins, they are active against the pseudomonas. Now, which are the cephalosporins which are active against pseudomonas? Let me tell you that. Right. So, these three are active against the pseudomonas. So, ceftazidim, ceftolazine, cefepirazone, they are active against pseudomonas. Now, which is the multiple choice question here? Remember, among these three, which is having maximum activity against the pseudomonas? It is ceftazidim, which is having maximum activity. Remember this point, it is the ceftazidim which is having maximum activity against the pseudomonas. This will be the multiple choice question. All right. Now, remember this ceftazidim, it is also the drug of choice for milioidosis. Right. This particular ceftazidim, this is also drug of choice for milioidosis. Okay, this is also drug of choice for meliodosis, right? And this particular meliodosis, it is caused by organism Bargoldaria pseudomaliae, right? This meliodosis, it is caused by the organism Bargoldaria pseudomaliae, okay? So, this is about your ceftazidim right let me sh shortly revise the clinical uses until now what we have discussed you take the first generation cephalosporins they are active against gram negative cocci that is staphylococci but for mrsa mrsa is resistant to even cephalosporins also you take cefazolin this is the drug of choice for surgical prophylaxis you take the second generation cephalosporins this group of drugs they are less active against gram positive organism than the first generation agents but they have extended gram negative coverage right and if you take the second generation cephalosporins they include 
cefotitan, cefmetazole, cefoxetin, they are active against anaerobes like bacteroid fragilis. Okay. Next, you take the cefuroxime, it attains the higher CSF as compared to any other second generation cephalosporins. You take the third generation cephalosporins, these are active against the gram negative organism resistant to other beta lactam antibiotics. These can also penetrate the blood brain barrier, but the exception is the cefepirazone and as well as cefixim, they will not penetrate the blood brain barrier. Next, now we have certain cephalosporins which are active against the pseudomonas. The examples are ceftazidim and then you have ceftolozane, then you have cefepirazone. These are active against pseudomonas. But maximum among that is the ceftazidim, which is active against the pseudomonas. Then we have another disease which is called as miliardosis. The ceftazidim, it is the drug of choice for miliardosis, which is caused by Burkholderia pseudomaly, right? And we have some more clinical uses of third generation cephalosporin. Let me tell you some more clinical uses of the third generation cephalosporins. So we have a third generation cephalosporin which is called ceftizoxine. Right, ceftizoxine. So if you take the ceftizoxine, it is having maximum activity against the bacteroids. Right, it is having the maximum activity against the bacteroids. All right, next. Next, the other important point is like we have a very important third generation cephalosporin, which is ceftriaxone. So, if you take the very important third generation cephalosporin that is ceftriaxone, remember this is the first choice drug for gonorrhea, first choice drug for salmonellosis including typhoid and it is a first choice drug for E. coli, first choice drug for proteus, serratia, haemophilus and it is the first choice drug for empirical therapy for bacterial meningitis. So that is about your ceftriaxone. Now remember what is the adverse effect associated with the ceftriaxone? Long term use of ceftriaxone, right? Long term use of more than 2 grams per day, right? Long term use of more than 2 grams per day of ceftriaxone is associated with what is called biliary sludging syndrome, right? It is associated with Okay, it is associated with the development of biliary sludging syndrome and not only biliary sludging syndrome, right, there is also the development of cholelithiasis due to the precipitation in the bile. So, biliary sludging syndrome and right and the cholelithiasis due to precipitation in the bile right due to precipitation in the bile now another important point is most of these drugs are reserved for very serious infection and not only that this ceftriaxone it has long plasma half life right it has long plasma half life next we have one more third generation cephalosporin that is cefotaxim. Cefotaxim, it is metabolized to an active metabolite which is called as desacetyl cefotaxim. Okay. So, cefotaxim, it is metabolized to an active metabolite which is called as desacetyl cefotaxim. Okay, so these are some of the clinical uses of the third generation cephalosporin. 
Now, now let me tell you the clinical uses of the fourth generation cephalosporin. Right? Clinical uses of the fourth generation cephalosporin. Remember, these fourth generation cephalosporins, they possess activity against the gram negative organisms including pseudomonas which are resistant to the third generation cephalosporin okay so which, whichever the gram negative organisms resistant to the third generation cephalosporins for these organisms we give right for these organisms we give the fourth generation cephalosporin right and their efficacy against gram positive cocci is similar to the third generation compounds right so towards gram positive cocci the efficacy So, if you see the efficacy against gram positive cocci, the efficacy against gram positive cocci is similar to the third generation compounds. Right, similar to the third generation compounds. But remember, however, these are not active against the anaerobes. right not active against anaerobes okay so this is about your fourth generation cephalosporins so let me shortly revise the clinical uses of the third and fourth generation remember we have what is called as ceftizoxine ceftizoxine it is having maximum activity against the bacteroids and you take the ceftriaxone ceftriaxone it is the first choice drug for gonorrhea salmonellosis E. coli sepsis, proteus, serratia, hemophilus and it is a first choice drug as an empirical therapy for bacterial meningitis, right? Next, long term use of more than 2 grams per day of ceftriaxone is associated with biliary sludge syndrome and cholelithiasis due to the precipitation of the bile and most of these drugs are reserved for serious infection. Right, and this ceftriaxone it is having long plasma half life. And you take the cefotaxime, it is metabolized to an active metabolite which is called as desacetyl cefotaxime. Okay, next we have the fourth generation cephalosporins. These drugs possess activity against gram negative organisms which are resistant to the third generation cephalosporin, and their efficacy against gram positive cocci is similar to the third generation compounds but remember however this particular fourth generation they are not active against the anaerobes 